Well, is this the end of Sergio Perez's career at Red Bull Racing and maybe even Formula One? Let's talk about that now. by Slipstream Motorsports. My name is Daniel. And if you're new here, first off, welcome. Um, we are a motorsport podcast that covers all sorts of news and motorsports across the globe, um, primarily supercars and F1. Um, and today we are going to talk about uh, whether or not Sergio Perez is safe uh, in Formula One and Red Bull. So let's talk about that. Of course, uh, the Belgian Grand Prix happened yesterday or last night. Um, it was a one, two for Mercedes until George Russell got disqualified. Um, but we're not here to talk about the race. We're here to talk about Red Bull, um, because this was a very important weekend for not only Red Bull, but also, um, Daniel Ricciardo and also Sergio Perez as well, because they were comparing Sergio to Max all weekend. Um, and basically he was nowhere near as quick as Max as always. But on paper, he might look all right. Uh, of course, he actually, he actually had a pretty decent weekend compared to what he's had since he got announced as a uh, extended, like as a extension uh, at the Monaco Grand Prix. Um, I've got the stats here, so I'll share that after. But uh, front row start for the Mexican, not too bad. But uh, to finish seventh after starting second, you know that's you shouldn't be going. F- lower than you start basically um and that's certainly what happened there um now keep in mind red bull weren't really that quick compared to the others this time around on the on the sunday anyway um uh, with max finishing fourth and checo seventh it was going to be fifth and eighth um until george got disqualified um and in saying that as well um sergio perez is still seventh in the championship but if um, George didn't get disqualified, he would have been he would have dropped down to eighth position. Um, now that is very 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 important because one of his contract uh, clauses was that he had to stay fifth or higher in the te- in the drivers championship. So to even drop down to eighth as we head into the summer break is uh, not very telling. That's for sure. And, uh, of course, there's heaps of drivers lined up. And, like I said, Daniel Ricciardo, he actually had a pretty decent weekend overall. He managed to get a point, um, thanks to the disqualification of um, George. But he drove really well. Uh, Unfortunately, for some reason, I don't know why, he was put on softs. um, But he recovered well. Um, He could have gotten ninth. He could have finished ninth, actually, if it wasn't for the fact that he had to pit earlier. Um, So his tyres were pretty much dead compared to, I think, Ocon, who passed him. Um, which was a real shame, but he he had a positive weekend uh, and uh, he looked quite happy leaving as he hopped in a helicopter with, uh, I believe, Max Verstappen and Christian Horner. Um, they looked quite friendly together and uh, ha- rightfully so. Um, but keep in mind, they are best friends. They are they do get along, well, not quite best friends, but they do get along very, very well. Um, Daniel has been part of that Red Bull family for a number of years and even when he went to, uh, after he had that horribleness, uh, with Renault and McLaren, he came back obviously as an ambassador. Um, so he has a good relationship with Horner, and he gets along well with Max as well. And uh, in my opinion, to be honest, he is most likely going to replace um, Sergio. But I'll get into that in a minute. But let's have a quick look at Sergio before we think about what's next. So let's have a look at. Uh, so yeah, obviously he finished. He started second row, finished seventh in Belgium. Um, let's have a quick look at how he went throughout the year so far. So first, um, so I'm going in order from obviously round one up to now. Uh, so there was a second place, a second place, a fifth place, a second and a third. And this is sort of where it goes downhill from here. So you go um, a fourth and eighth. And I believe this is when he got announced at Monaco um, that uh, his, he uh, extended his contract for two years. Uh, a DNF and another DNF. Um, now keep in mind the Monaco Grand Prix, that was his own fault for putting him in that position. He didn't cause the crash, but the fact that he was involved in that crash is, says everything because he had a horrible, horrible qualifying. Uh, he was, he shouldn't even be a back marker anyway. And somehow he was, and, uh, potato, potato, 
you don't finish the race. And obviously, uh, he also got another DNF after that one. And then 8th and a 7th, and then a 17th, um, and then two sevenths uh, after that, including the Belgian one. So uh, very consistent, but not where that Red Bull should be. Absolutely not. Given how they're currently leading the Constructors' Championship at the moment. Uh, yes, we're only halfway through the year. Um, yes, they're leading by quite a margin at the moment, but McLaren are looking very, very, very fast at the moment, especially Oscar Piastri. Uh, he could have well and truly won yesterday if it wasn't for that poor pit stop that he had uh, and if it wasn't maybe another lap. But uh, you're not going to win the Constructors' title if you have one driver doing well. in the. In, he, to be honest, Max hasn't won the last three or so rounds now. Um, and if they keep this up, and Sergio sitting in 7th and 17th, for example, you're not going to win the Constructors that way. No way. Um, so they really need to get a hustle on and move if they want to basically claim, maintain that win, pretty much. Um, and unfortunately, in my opinion, I don't think uh, Sergio Perez is actually cut up for that. I reckon if I was Christian Horner, I would get rid of Sergio in favour for... Um, someone you can guarantee will be decent in that car and get results. Um, and uh, let's talk about that now. So obviously you can tell my opinion is Sergio Perez will most likely highly positively not be in that Red Bull come uh, Zandervoort. Um, I'll be really, really shocked if and uh, be really uh, disappointing if Red Bull make a stupid decision like that to keep him in there. It just doesn't make sense in my opinion. Um, but... Uh, What's next before that though is uh, they have a there's an Imola test day or a filming day um, where Liam Lawson and Daniel Ricciardo will pretty much go head to head um, in a AT03 which is a 2022 spec Alfa Tauri. Um, they will be going head to head and being compared. Uh, Yuki Tsunoda is also going to be there as well, but uh, I don't think he is going to be um, replacing Sergio at all. Um, nothing against Yuki, I just don't think that. That's the case uh, from the sounds of things. Um, but uh, in my opinion, uh, also this, and Liam Lawson, by the way, um, if he doesn't get any Red Bull drive, whether it's uh, RB or Red Bull, um, he is apparently a free agent heading into 2025. So there is maybe there is a potential link that he could potentially go to Audi uh, or, or, to, or kick Sauber before the Audi project. Um Regardless, I'll be happy as long as he's in Formula 1. Um, but, yeah, it, I reckon if he doesn't get a, a seat come Zandervoort, whether it's in RB, like I said, then he simply should just give up on the Red Bull dream because uh, Red Bull haven't got a great reputation for uh, their academy drivers, that's for sure, and giving them a chance um, for a whole season. Um, obviously, we saw Danny Kvyat get transferred halfway, Pierre Gasly half transferred halfway, Albon kicked out, a mess um but uh who do i reckon will take that seat um not next year in, in a month's time um i reckon i i reckon it makes more sense this way too uh daniel ricardo um obviously I, um he after the belgian grand prix he hopped in a helicopter with christian horner and max verstappen and uh he looked quite happy and obviously you know they're, they're good mates those guys and they get along quite well and of course daniel has been a uh, part of that red bull family um, for quite a long time now, uh, excluding the Renault and McLaren days. Um, so he gets along really, really well with them. Um, but in my opinion, he's just logically a better option to put in that car. Um, now, Liam is most likely going to be faster. Um, however, Daniel Ricciardo has definitely been doing rather well in that uh, V-Carb um, RB. Um, and the thing is... He's had good days and bad days this year. Uh, pace hasn't been like he hasn't been the most amazing driver. Uh, I'm gonna say that now. He there has been moments where you just don't think he deserves a seat in Formula One, let alone a Red Bull. Um, but there's been times that he's been really, really promising too. And uh, unfortunately, with Daniel and Yuki, uh, V Carb is letting him down at the moment with strategy and their car performance. Um, their some of their last strategy calls have been quite atrocious. And their, their car setups have been atrocious as well. So, uh, like, for example, Yuki, I think he had a brake issue this weekend, finished 17th. And obviously, that, compared to Dan Ricciardo, Yuki would most likely uh, be up there somewhere as well. So it's a real shame. that It's just, 
I'm not a fan of e-car, but I'm a fan of the drivers, um, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, but in my opinion, it makes more sense Dan Ricciardo to be there um, because he is experienced. Uh, he's been in that Red Bull team before, so he knows how it operates and works. Um, of course, he's also been Max Verstappen's teammate before. Now, this was before Max won the championship, but he was still a force to be reckoned with even uh, back in 2018. Obviously, we sort of remember the Baku incident when they collided. Um, and, you know, Red Bull love him. He's a fantastic uh, ambassador. He's a fantastic for advertising and marketing. Um, it just makes more sense. Plus, he will get the job done. He will deliver. He can deliver on in that V-carb. He can deliver in that Red Bull. Hands down. Just makes sense even to at least have him till the end of the year even and put Liam in in the car for 25, depending if uh, Re uh, if Ricardo actually is decent or not in that Red Bull. Um, but I reckon right now, a safe bet to maintain that Constructors' champion Championship standings, uh, I reckon Dan Ricardo is the most logical driver. Um, but with that being said, do let us know who you think. I'd love to get a conversation started. Uh, if who you would like to see in the um, in that Red Bull come the Dutch Grand Prix. Uh, whether it is Liam, whether it is Sergio, you know, you might even want Sergio in there or Yuki uh, or Daniel Ricciardo or even Helmut Marco for all that matters. Um, but uh, now let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts, get a conversation going. Just as long as there's no hate, I would love to hear if you've got an opinion. I'd love to know why. Um, that's, the, you know, that's the most, I, I like that way. So we'll do that. Um, and if you want to get in touch with us still and talk about all this stuff as well with everyone, uh, we've also got a Facebook page and a Discord. It will be in the uh, description as well where you can join that group and become part of our LTM community and post anything, opinion pieces or anything, and get a conversation starting there as well. And uh, like I said earlier, this wasn't a review for the Belgian Grand Prix. That's coming up. Uh, we'll be doing a live um, podcast review either Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, just follow our socials. We'll keep you updated as to when that happens. Um, so be sure to join that live and ask questions, and then you can be featured in the podcast as well. Uh, also check out our Spotify. We've got heaps of content there as well. Uh, we've got the LTM show, which is our weekly radio show um, that comes up every Tuesday. Uh, and of course, the podcast that I mentioned about will also be on there as well as YouTube. So heaps of content coming your way. Um, so do not miss any bit of it. Make sure you subscribe and hit that ding dong notification bell to stay up to date every time uh, LTM posts content. Um, but yeah, that's all from me. This was going to be short, just a little opinion rant piece. Um, get a conversation starting and uh, yeah, but uh, no, thanks for tuning in and listening and watching wherever you are and uh, hope to see you uh, for the review in a couple days. So that's all from me. Bye for now.